Live from Case at 12, the night beat starts right now. She was everything. She did everything for everybody. A mother taken away from her family. The suspect in her death still on the run. Police sharing a new detail in that case. An acts of goodwill on the site of a tragedy. This memorial location in San Antonio is where people are still helping those grieving the lives lost in that 18 wheeler. Plus, one church is giving you a chance to gas up for free. We're going to tell you where it's all happening tomorrow. Those details are coming up. But first, the Uvalde County District Attorney is breaking her silence. She's defending her decision to keep the Uvalde investigation under wraps. As many of you know, she's refused to answer our questions regarding surveillance video and delays in payments to the victim's families from the Uvalde Together Resiliency Center. And today, the Uvalde Leader News, the newspaper there, released an interview with the district attorney. She told that newspaper she avoided commenting to avoid jeopardizing the shooting investigation. Christina Mitchell Busby quoted as saying, quote, this review can only occur after all the facts and evidence regarding an event have been gathered properly and responsibly by law enforcement without bias, prejudice or hasty conclusions, end quote. Surveillance video from Robb Elementary showing the response was leaked earlier this week. Victims families are set to view the video without audio on Sunday. The district attorney told the newspaper she worked with state and local agencies to secure state funding to provide counseling and will continue this endeavor, but she did not say anything about payments being made or not being made to victims' families. Busby heads the Uvalde Together Resiliency Center. State Senator Roland Gutierrez and Uvalde's mayor say some families are receiving insufficient and delayed payments from that center. The world has not forgotten the 53 migrants who died as a result of being packed in the back of a tractor trailer several weeks ago. It was abandoned on Quintana Road in southwest San Antonio. But now that very space has turned into a memorial that continues to grow. The night team's Camelia Juarez takes us there. Cars slow down along this stretch of Quintana Road. When you see pictures of children and you know, they left families behind. People have come to pay their respects and honor the migrants who died here just a few weeks ago. I mean, these are probably like someone's dad, mother, brother, sister, niece, nephew, what have you. And it's just, it, it's an eye opener. Since migrants were found here on June 27th, visitors have traveled to pay their respects. They come and go unless they're out of town because people have made pilgrimages to here uh, to, to see this from North Carolina, Florida, Oregon. People were so impacted by what happened to the migrants that not even the heat stopped them from coming to the site. Among those people is Sandra Grace Martinez. She's been coming a few times a week to keep the memorial clean. She also used donations to pay for porta potties. And then there was rosaries that lasted two hours and there was dances and, you know, uh, saging and all kinds of things. So people had to go to the bathroom. Other volunteers have been mindful of other visitors, bringing extra drinks, fruit and ice to make sure people have what they need to heal and come together. I don't know if it's because their journey may have been similar and um, they like the energy here when people are together and sharing their stories. I mean, I, I would like, you know, that to be all over our community. And that's our Camelia Juarez reporting. Now we know that people are going to gather at the Quintana Road site again in a few weeks. They're going to mark one month since this happened. On July 27th, people are going to bring mariachi and rosaries to honor the 53 people who died. New tonight, a 71-year-old woman escapes her attacker, and now San Antonio police want you to be on alert. Officers say that woman walking alone near Bowen's Crossing and Laurel Bend Monday night. Investigators say a man attacked her, but she was able to get away. Police are asking people in the Bowen's Crossing area to be aware. They remind everyone to not walk alone, to walk in well-lit areas. Also, avoid distractions from your phone if you know any information in this case. Call police at the number you see on your screen, 207 2313. Now a search for answers in a deadly hit and run. Jessica Harper was killed just one day before Mother's Day. The car that hit her was left at the scene and police are still looking for the driver. The night team's John Paul Baraja sat down with Harper's husband to talk about the challenges that he and his family continue to face. I can't do it. 
Okay. I just want her back. It's been a long two months for Robert Harper as he learns to live without his beloved wife, Jessica. San Antonio police say a driver ran a red light, crashed into Jessica's car, killing her, and then ran off the day before Mother's Day. My son, he was texting his mom all day on Mother's Day, even though he knew she wasn't there. It makes me feel bad, guilty. And already another painful milestone. Instead of celebrating Jessica's 45th birthday on July 6th, Harper says his family spent the day at her grave, hoping for justice. I don't know if it would give us closure. I didn't think it would bother me as much as it does. Every day that goes by, I just get angry. Emotionally, times are unbearable. The couple's 13-year-old and 15-year-old are in bereavement counseling. Financially, times are just as bad. Jessica was the main provider. Harper's need for a kidney transplant has limited his ability to work, and now he has the duties of a widowed parent. Keeping up with most of the bills, but we're starting to fall behind. I'm just, I don't know where it's going to go now. For now, he says he's just taking it one day at a time. His wife's picture around his neck gives him strength to keep fighting. It's everything. I got her close to me. I just feel like she's with me now. I mean, even though she's not with me, I have this. And John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Yeah, you got to feel for that family. We certainly hope that they find answers. San Antonio police are investigating and they learn that the suspect's vehicle left at the scene was not stolen. Harper says that a detective told him that it belonged to an associate of the suspect. A San Antonio police officer stabbed in the neck. The five year veteran of the force is doing OK tonight. Now, his name has not been released. We do know the name of the man who accused of plunging that pocket knife into the officer's neck, though. It's this guy. Christopher Joshua Perry. That's his picture. Investigators say the 23 year old was already accused of assaulting a woman yesterday afternoon. That's when an officer was called to the home and the woman collected her things. Police say a fight broke out. The officer intervened and that's when he was stabbed. Another case of monkeypox confirmed in San Antonio. So that makes three cases total. The virus can cause rashes, sores, and permanent scars, but it's rarely fatal. But you can still protect yourself by avoiding skin-to-skin -skin contact in large, crowded spaces like festivals or nightclubs. And if you see a new, unexplained rash on your body, just call your doctor. You'll likely need to isolate. The thing is that a vaccine, it is around, but it's in limited supply. So only the people who have had close contact with a known case of the disease are getting it. Now, when it comes to COVID-19, Metro Health is reporting more than 1,200 new cases today. No new deaths were reported, but the risk level in our community, that still remains high. As for hospitalizations, we know that 325 people are in the hospital because of COVID. Doctors continue to encourage people to get the vaccine and the booster if they haven't done so already. Yep, it's that time. Time for a look at your headlines in your night beat news flash. The goal is to save lives and prevent suicides. Starting tomorrow, anyone can call 988 to talk or text with a trained mental health counselor. Those three numbers, 988. The National Suicide Prevention Lifeline started in 2005 with a 10 digit number. The change to 988 meant to be easier to remember. Again, the three digit mental health lifeline goes live 24 7 starting tomorrow. One man now missing part of his finger. San Antonio police say he was shot after stealing credit cards, keys and a car. Investigators still don't know who shot the man in the hand. They say he ended up crashing that stolen car outside of Bill Miller's restaurant near Calabria and General McMullen on the west side. Police say using those stolen credit cards may have notified the owner about the suspect's location, but that remains a little bit unclear tonight. And some say a picture is worth a thousand words. This photo stirred up compassion in downtown San Antonio. Tyler Ibarra took the photo at Travis Park. It's what he saw out his window every day. His coffee shop located just across the street from there. He says seeing the unsheltered in the hot sun led him to share the photo on social media with a call to action. Soon people donated water, food, hygiene products. He's been handing out supplies and plans to continue the effort this weekend. Way to go, Tyler. And that's a look at your Nightbeat News Flash. 
Well, you have a chance to gas up for free tomorrow. That's right, for free. We're going to tell you which gas station's expecting a line of cars and when that event is set to begin. That story coming up. Also a drug lord on the run for nearly a decade now captured the reward that's offered in the case and how he was able to walk out of prison. And we've welcomed the rain this week, but there have been times our area got too much of a good thing. I know I was there. It's been 20 years since the floods in New Braunfels. The safeguards now in place for that city. We take a look back next on the night beat. Welcome back. I know some of you are happy because you got a chance to welcome that today. Rain. This is north of Loop. This is, excuse me, north of 281 and Loop 1604 in Stone Oak. You could see the showers watering that backyard lawn near Bulverde Road and Marshall Road. The rain also cooling temperatures in that area. What a great so nice, site. Nice, yeah. right? And we've been wanting to see that rain during the summer drought. Yeah, it was a different story, though, 20 years ago when parts of our viewing area got so much rain it flooded and one of the hardest hit towns, the city of New Braunfels. The night team's Patty Santos tells us what's changed in 20 years to better mitigate flooding there. Fourth of July weekend, 2002. Water was just rushing down the road. Um, it looked like a river running down a main street. Amber Johansson remembers the road closures in Braunfels and surrounding communities followed by destruction. And you've seen houses washed away that are on what, probably 30 foot foundations, pier and beams, and they've just floated down the river. And I'll show you why that happened. Kamau County Engineer Tom Hornseth says emergency officials had early warnings of flooding, but it was worse than predicted. It's the first time and the only time that Canyon Dam has actually uh, gone over its emergency spillways. New Braunfels homes stood in the way of the powerful stream heading south. He went under uh, 35 and down toward uh, Lake Dunlap, carrying RVs and anything in its wake. The current formed a new gorge, took out roads and cost the county more than $5.6 million in cleanup and parcel buyouts. It also prompted change and upgrades. And some of those floodplain areas have been expanded to try to prevent people from building within those floodplains. He says another way that engineers try to minimize the impact of fast moving water is by using concrete walls, sort of like this one. This is like a miniature dam. And there are five of these flood retarding structures south of the dam. Between 2002 and 2012, the city of New Braunfels spent over $30 million in drainage projects, bridges, and studies, according to Gary Ford with the city's Capital Improvements Division. We're actually updating our drainage area master plan. A lot has been done, but no one's really safe. The next flood is coming. Be prepared, be, have a game plan, uh, you know, stay alert. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. Another news now, a runaway drug lord now captured. Rafael Caro Quintero led the Guadalajara cartel decades ago. The FBI now says that this photo was taken of Quintero back in 2016, the one that's on your screen. But this case goes back even further. Caro Quintero was behind the killing of USDA agent Enrique Kiki Camarena back in 1985. And while he was in prison, an appeals court overturned his sentence and he was allowed to leave prison in 2013. The Supreme Court upheld that sentence, but it was already too late. There was a $20 million reward for his capture, and Caro Quintero was arrested this afternoon. All right, brace yourselves. There's a chance to gas up for Woo! free tomorrow, but as you can imagine, you're not going to be the only one there, probably. You're going to want to take a picture of your TV screen right now. City Hills Church in Bernie, giving back to the community, they say, with free gas as long as the funds will last. Now, the event is happening at the Exxon gas station at 369 South Esser Road in Bernie. The giveaway set to start at 930 AM tomorrow, expected to end at 1130 AM. It could end sooner, though, depending on how long the funds last. Ah, yeah, people are going to start lining up at like 5 AM. That's my prediction. Or right after this newscast. This is true. Yeah. yeah. All right, beautiful night out there and uh, kind of see the flag waving off in the distance. So get a little wind out there at least. A bit of a breeze, but high humidity. Re yeah. Really feeling the stickiness outside today. And part of that's a result of the recent rainfall, which was nice for some parts of town yesterday and then again today. So we did have a few stray downpours, however, 
No more going forward. This weekend is going to be sunny and dry and even into next week looking very dry. Today marked the first day we've been under 100 degrees so far this July. Tomorrow should be the second day so far this month and the Saharan dust increasing in the days ahead. We're going to talk about that and I'll show you the model in just a moment. But first, we just have to share this beautiful time lapse from our city cam looking off to the northwest. One downpour on the left hand side of the screen and then get ready. Here comes another. They're moving east to west and of course they were highly isolated, but they did dump some decent rainfall in some locations. For example, the Bracken Bat Cave reported 1.65 inches of rainfall and then the bats quickly uh, emerged this evening and you may have noticed an extra volume of bats, especially on the north side this evening. I think some of the pups may be uh, big enough to get out and also the bats don't have to travel as far with the recent rainfall, keeping the insects a little bit closer to home. Sometimes they travel 100 miles anyway. Taking a look at the north side of town where we had the heavy rainfall, we're talking Stone Oak all the way to the Bracken Bat Cave, nearly two inches estimated right along the Bear County, Comal County line. You get into Stone Oak, anywhere from a half an inch to just over an inch estimated by Doppler radar. Other parts of town, northwest side, also got hit with some rain. You get Holotus down Bandera Road all the way toward Abe Lincoln Road here, about 0.6. That's between Bandera and Hebner roads just west of I-10. And I will get to this Saharan dust in just a moment because it will be increasing as we get through the weekend. But I want to talk temperatures first. 97 today. That's just two degrees above average and far shy of our record of 102. And you look at the readings right now for the most part, low 80s, even some upper 70s. So often this month and really the past few months, during the night beat right now, well, after 10 o'clock, we've been still near 90 degrees. Only Del Rio is near 90. 79 Kerrville in Fredericksburg, 82 officially in town. Hondo, 82 degrees. Bulverde, 75 in Seguin. You're 78. Tomorrow, 98 for the high temperature. And then this weekend, we're back above 100 on Sunday. Sunday, 101. Next week, we'll be in the low 100s with some record challenging heat Wednesday and Thursday as we get to about 102, 103. I mentioned the humidity earlier. It is sticky out there, but this was good. The humidity was really strong all day, and that helped with our efficient rainfall from those few downpours. Now, tomorrow we're going to see the humidity drop off a little bit in the afternoon, but it's still going to be noticeable with dew points in the 60s. So making it feel like it's a few degrees warmer than the actual air temperature, feeling like 101 by the afternoon. Here's our Saharan dust forecast increasing throughout the day tomorrow, then on Sunday being the most noticeable before it starts to disperse and move out of town throughout the day on Monday. Then it's gone by Tuesday. So Sunday's the prime day for the Saharan air layer to be overhead. 77 in the morning, 98 tomorrow afternoon. And I do think for the most part, we'll be in the mid to upper 90s across our area for highs. And then Sunday, extra haze in the air because of the African dust. Next week, dry, sunny, and just above 100. Back to the usual routine. <sighs> All right, yeah. <laughs> take a deep breath. We'll be all right. So the UTSA uh, is giving back to the community. Well, the Roadrunners football team and two yeah. of their big stars. Of course, we're talking about Frank Harris and Rashad Wisdom had a free clinic today, a free football camp, if you will. And when we come back, we'll talk more about that here from them and their give back to the community and a very emotional day for Tiger coming up. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. The Houston Texans have settled with 30 women who were prepared to make claims against the NFL franchise for enabling former star quarterback Deshaun Watson's behavior during massages. That's according to Houston attorney Tony Busby, one of those 30 women had already filed a civil lawsuit against the team and the others were prepared to do the same, although the settlement was confidential. This comes after an article by the New York Times that said the team provided access to the exclusive Houstonian Spa and Resort where some of the massages occurred and even provided Watson with non-disclosure agreements as far back as 2020. Since that time, Watts has been traded to the Browns who wait to see if he violated the NFL's code of conduct and what punishment he may or may not face. Here's a release in a statement uh, this afternoon from the owners of the Texans. We were shocked and deeply saddened when we first learned of the allegations against our franchise quarterback in March of 2021. Although our organization did not have any knowledge of Deshaun Watson's alleged misconduct, we have intentionally chosen to resolve this matter amicably. This is not an admission of any wrongdoing, but instead a clear stand against any form of sexual assault or misconduct. 
Our San Antonio Spurs have at least one more shot at a victory when they face the Memphis Grizzlies tomorrow to close out their summer league play in Las Vegas. That's after they lost to the Atlanta Hawks on Thursday in Sin City to go 0-4, tying the Dallas Mavericks for the worst record. It's after the Spurs were able to get out to an early lead again. Spurs first round draft pick number 25 overall. Blake Wesley was the leading scorer with 20 points, 6 assists, 2 rebounds and 2 steals. The Spurs had an early lead up 21-20 after 1. Kai Bowman rolled up 14 points, 3 rebounds, 2 assists and 2 steals to help the Spurs out to a 12-point lead prior to the half. Then the 20th pick overall, Malachi Branham had at 13 points and the Spurs were up 70-61 to going into the fourth quarter. That's when Tyson at 10 came up and off the bench to score 21 points and routed the Hawks to an 87-86 victory. I was just active today. Uh, we had a couple of days off. Got my body right. Got some treatment. Uh, got my mind right for the next game. Uh, and I played today's game good. So everybody played good. It just came a little short. All right, final game tomorrow against Memphis is at 5 o'clock. Calvin Johnson made the trip to Las Vegas to check out the future of the franchise. The Spurs have decided to build around the Olympic gold medalist as their new leader. It was the first time I really got to see like our, our new rookies play uh, with each other, and uh, it was it was great. They was aggressive. They showed some great flashes of what they're going to do next year for us. So uh, they definitely get a chance to play. You know, as everybody knows, we're re rebuilding. You know, we expect to come in, play hard, and, and win. All right, two of the biggest names in the Conference USA champion, UTSA Road Orders, quarterback Frank Harris, safety Rashad Wisdom, giving back to the community today following their success on the field. The local high school products were very much a part of the Roadrunners' best football season in school history, finishing at 12-2 and, and winning the Conference USA Championship for the first time in head coach Jeff Trailers' just second season. Today, Harris and Wisdom hosted a free football camp for kids from second to eighth grade called Countdown City Skills Camp over at Lindhoff Stadium. And they were joined by other football stars as Malcolm Brown and Trey Flowers among others. I just remember me being this age and coming to these camps and thinking like, you know, one day I want to be able to have my own and, uh, you know, it's kind of surreal that, you know, I mean, the moment's here now and um, like I said, it's a blessing to be able to do this, be in this position and I'm just glad I'm able to give back to the community that I was raised in. It's something, you know, it's a dream of to come back to your community and uh, give a camp to the kids. So it was a no-brainer for me to, to have it and uh, we're just grateful for, to be out here. You know, it's hard to believe the college football season not that far off. The Roadrunners kick off their game against in their season against Houston at home in the Alamo Dome on Saturday, September the 3rd, one week after the KSAP Pigskin Classic 2022 presented by your San Antonio area Chevy dealers. Tigers tour for goodbye at the Open Championship today. Next. Second round of the 150th Open Championship in St. Andrews, Scotland today as golfers try to make the cut line. One of those who didn't have to worry about that was the leader, Cameron Smith, putting for an eagle right here on the par 5 14th hole. He gets it to drop in, moving three strokes clear of the field. Smith shot six birdies, no bogeys today, boasting the lowest 36-hole score at an Open in St. Andrews, hallowed history of 131. Look at that. But what? While Smith dominated... Most of the crowd was focused on Tiger Woods, who continued his struggles after finishing six over yesterday. Woods was three over today to miss the cut, but he received a remarkable ovation from the crowd as he approached the 18th hole. Woods was emotional, wiping tears from his eyes because he knows this might be his last open at St. Andrews. It was very emotional for me. Um, I've been coming here since 1995, and um, I don't know when the, I think the next one comes around in what, 230, uh, 2030, and I don't know if I'll, I'll be physically able to play by then. Um, so the fans, uh, the ovation and the warmth, um, it was an unbelievable feeling. All right, here is a look at the leaderboard. You can see Smith right now has a two-stroke lead among the top of the leaderboard. You look at the, some other favorites for you to check out, including guys like Jordan Spieth, and then failing to qualify besides Tiger Woods, both John Daly and Phil Mickelson. But that was a very emotional day for Tiger. Absolutely. And, and a guy that for so long in his career showed very little emotion. A absolutely. So you know how much this means to him and gets to him. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Greg. We'll be right back. That does it for the night. Be don't forget, Good Morning San Antonio starts at 6 a.m. And by the way, Sunday night, you're going to be here. Yes, I'll be here to join you. So please join us then. Until then, have a wonderful weekend. We'll see you.